G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, in that last video you saw where my trusty Hilda, hard-working Hilda, has finally pegged out, burnt out, pushed it a bit too hard for too long. And anyway, that was the end of that. I've already ordered another one. I mean, these are indispensable tool in the workshop. Super, super handy. Cheap to run. You don't need an air compressor. They're pretty quiet. They're a good unit. As well as that, for, you know, grinding and drilling. I've also used it as a tool post grinder. And I know a lot, of, a lot of other people have too. You just simply make up a bracket that goes in your tool post. And this just fits on. And you snug it up with a pinch bolt. That's all there is to it. Works good. There is one slight problem, and that is that on this nose here, which was never designed for this sort of use, is it's not absolutely parallel. It's a slight taper on it. You can see how it's worn into position, you know, sort of... <laughs> wearing parallel over the years. It's done a lot of work, this thing. And I've had a number, number of people say, oh, you know, how do you go machining that parallel? You know, there's enough meat there to do it. Can you take this off and machine it parallel? And I had a viewer in this, on this last video ask me the same question, you know. Well, I've looked at this many times over the years I've had this, and I've wondered, but I haven't been game to try and take it off, you know, the unit, off the armature, because the bearings are press fit, and I thought, I don't want to screw up the bearings, you know, these are a high-speed unit, and you, you, you could risk damaging them. But anyway, as it's buggered, well, it's stuff, so I thought, okay, let's pull it apart and just see how this nose fits on the armature. So I'll, I'll basically show you what's involved. First thing you do is take the brushes out either side, take out the three Phillips head screws that hold the, the nose on, and then give it a good pull and it should pull out looking like that. So this, the armature is still attached to the, um, to the front nose piece. It's, it's, it's a press-on bearing. Okay, now you get the, to take the chuck off is easy. You just put a spanner on the armature there and it just unscrews. So just put an Allen key in the jaws and just unscrew it. So that's the way that comes off. So what have we got then? All right, I'll show you. Basically, once you take the chuck off, behind the chuck is a sleeve and behind the sleeve is a dust cover. And behind the dust cover is the bearing. I used a, a pin punch and a small hammer. And I basically just put this in the vise, rested it in the vise and just tapped down on the, on the end of the shaft and it popped off dead easy. Didn't take much effort at all. So you could do it that way. If you do do it this way with a with a punch, make sure just to rotate the armature each time you you hit it. And that way you're not hitting the you know the thing with the bearings in the same position. But it didn't take much to come off at all. It wasn't excessive by any stretch. Bearings still smooth as anything. The other alternative is of course you just use a three jaw puller behind the back and put your screw out onto the end of the armature, and that will just pull it off. Easy, easy peasy. Okay, so what are we left with? Well, I was thinking initially that turning it, you know, it up to get this parallel could be a bit tricky because these holes are not uniform distance. They're actually, they vary in their spacing and this nose only goes on in one position. So I thought, well, that's going to be a bit of a bummer. I'll have to use the four jaw. Then, of course, then you've got to get everything lined up. It's actually not a problem because on the back, if you look on the back, there are three uniform locating lugs. There's a plate there which you can leave on. So this will go straight into a three-jaw chuck. No problem. 
and it will come up against the end of the jaws so it should pull up you should be able to line it dead easy so I'll machine this now so um, when I get the new one I'll swap it over and uh, if it's the same it should be the same we'll be good to go so this should be a piece of cake just to take that very slight taper off right I'll just use a high speed steel tool on it that works well with aluminium normally fine feed about I don't know, 450 rpm give it a go taking off the bare minimum I'll just take a little bit more off because I've still got plenty of compression left there so it uh, yeah it'll be okay so I'll do one more pass might go in a little bit further and that way I can get it to go the full width of the grip it's just back a bit at the moment so there you go you can take off as much as you want but uh, I mean there's quite a bit of meat there so you know you could take it right back if you want to I'll just taking off enough to do the job I mean that's plenty that, uh, that'll pull up square, no problem whatsoever. And uh, that's all there is to it, guys. To put it back together, do it with the armature out, the way I would do it would be to, if they haven't got a press, I'd just do it in the lathe. I'd put a dead centre in the, in the chuck, put the point of the dead centre on that end of the shaft, put this on here, and then use the tailstock ram to press the with a piece of wood over it or something like that to press the bearing onto the shaft easy that would be plenty adequate pressure to do that no problem and uh, yeah piece of cake all right well that's it for me i hope you found that useful and uh, yeah if you're careful i think this should be um, quite doable all right, we'll see you next time. Cheers.